you guys know that I've covered Julian Assange's case. Um, you know, I, I've uh, covered it uh, in and outside uh, uh, the court in England. And, um, you know, I, ho I have a whole playlist detailing uh, uh, his case. I want to tell you, though, about a, another journalist who's also in prison in Europe. Um, and his name is uh, Pablo Gonzalez. He's a Spanish journalist, and he's currently in prison in Poland. He was arrested five days after um, the war in Ukraine started. So basically February 28th, um, uh, 28th, 29th of 2022. Okay, so we're now in, you know, basically almost June in 2023. So, I mean, he's been well over a year uh, in prison. And uh, because he has dual nationality, he's both Russian and Spanish because his father uh, and mother are, are Russian and Spanish. Uh, they're accusing him of espionage. Um, you know, this guy has not been, uh, uh, you know, there's been no trial and every three months they just extend his detention another three months, right? So they're basically keeping him in prison, in solitary confinement, 23 hours a day in his cell alone, no one to talk to, they, you know, the mail doesn't get through and, um, uh, he, you know, he hasn't even, he hasn't even been charged with anything. So I wanted to go through this because it's very important that we... Uh, you know, we call this out and I make you guys aware of this and we make some noise about his case because it's, it's such an atrocity, right? So he, the Guardian did a piece on this, but I, I, I actually found out through, through somebody else, but they did a quite, uh, you know, they did a comprehensive piece. Um, uh, David Mendoza actually told me about his case. Pablo Gonzalez is a freelance journalist from Spain and well, they say 10th week, but you know, now it's, it's, um, it's well over a year in Polish custody while prosecutors there investigate espionage allegations that appear to be linked to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. So, in a case that raises red flags about press freedom in Europe at a time of war, prosecutors are expected to ask a judge for a further three-month ex extension um, to the detention of Pablo Gonzalez, who is freelanced for media, including Spain's um, uh, La Sexta Channel, Spanish state news agency EFE, and the U.S. government-funded Voice of America. So... You know, as we know now, every three months they have asked for an extension. So, yeah, they did. Under Polish law, Gonzalez can be held in custody until he's put on trial, a process that lawyers say could easily take more than a year. So, I mean, th th that's scandalous. You know, that is really scandalous because, you know, in many countries, at least in the United Kingdom, uh, you know, you, you have to be charged with a crime officially within a certain number of hours or else the police have to let you go. Right. So these are things that 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 date back, um, uh, you know, uh, a long time. <laughs> I, I wouldn't say the UK is very consistent or always consistent in applying it. But, yeah, it's it's, um, um, you know, it's it's a legal concept that goes back uh, uh, many, many centuries. In the case of Poland, though, you know, they can just keep extending this detention. It kind of reminds me of of administrative detention, which I told you guys about when when it comes to the. Israel arresting Palestinians. And the funny thing is that that is actually also a British law, but it's a colonial one, right? So it's funny how you get treated in England versus how England treats you in your own country in Palestine. Polish officials accuse Pablo Gonzalez of, of being an agent of Russia's infamous GRU military intelligence. Quote, he carried out operations for the benefit of Russia, profiting from his status of journalist, which enabled him to freely travel around the world and Europe, including military conflict zones, according to a spokesperson for Poland's ministry, uh, minister coordinator of special services. I mean, th this is basically defamation, you know, just like accusing him of espionage with no proof. I mean, he could, re if, if this were England, he could sue you into oblivion. The next sentence says, vast evidence, uh, uh, quote, vast evidence has been secured, which now undergoes a detailed analysis, the spokesperson said adding that Gonzalez, uh, Gonzalez faces 10 years in jail for taking part in, quote, activities of foreign intelligence services against the Republic of Poland. So, Nazi Germany? What, what does this even mean? Like, <laughs> what is he doing against Poland? This is ridiculous. Anyway, um, you know, I, I, I don't understand what this means. I, I, I feel like they're just trying to hush, hush the fact that he's, you know, they have a ju journalist inside of, like, a maximum security prison with no charge and and they don't really they don't really know what to do so they're just like smearing him friends and family of pablo gonzalez claim the allegations are absurd and have demanded that gonzalez be tried or freed immediately a spanish journalist um uh who's off who's often traveled with uh, gonzalez says that quote i have no doubt 
that he is not a spy. Um, and uh, actually traveled with him to many countries over a dozen years. So that's Texera who said that. Or Teixeira, I'm not sure on the, about the pronunciation. So Pablo Gonzalez, who was born in Russia and has joint Spanish and Russian nationality, was detained after agents from Poland's internal security agency, ABW, knocked on his hotel door in the border town of... Uh, Claudia, you're going to have to help me out with the pronunciation. I'm so sorry. Is it... I, I don't even want to say. I don't even want to try. They basically detained him in a border town shortly after midnight on 27th of February. Again, please excuse me, Claudia, and anyone who's Polish who's watching. Um, Gonzalez had been covering the refugee crisis and also planned to report from the Ukrainian side of the border. His Polish lawyer, um, Bartosz uh, Rogala, said that he was well, that, that Pablo Gonzalez was well, and had been visited by the Spanish consul. So the consul is... Um, uh, basically someone who uh, works in the embassy, okay? So not, not the ambassador, but under, under the ambassador. His wife, Ojana Goriena, uh, complained that family letters and parcels had been delayed, uh, either delayed or not handed over. And they include drawings from his children, she told the Guardian. Um, Goriena said her husband made regular visits to see his father in Russia. Gonzalez's two passports give him different names. His Russian passport bears his father's surname, uh, Rutsov and Pavel, um, the Russian version of Pablo, while his Spanish passport bears his mother's Spanish surname, Gonzalez. Supporters fear that this is seen as proof that he was using aliases. It's kind of difficult to do that, even, even if, if the surname is different. You know, today, with, with facial recognition technology, they literally just have to scan his passport and it gets run through Interpol and Europol and a million other things. This... I don't think that using a different surname changes anything. The date of birth will be the same. The place of birth will be the same. It, it's literally, I, I don't, that doesn't prove that, uh, Jesus, if that's criteria for being a spy, then you can arrest half, you know, okay, not half the planet, but you know, I'm just speaking figuratively. That confusion arises because Gonzalez's parents divorced and his mother moved to Spain when Gonzalez was a young boy registering under her surname. Gonzalez's maternal grandfather had been one of thousands of Spanish children evacuated to Russia during the Spanish Civil War in 1936. Gonzalez speaks Russian. He studied Slavic, uh, langu uh, Slavic languages at university and specializes in the post-Soviet world, reporting mostly for Spanish outlets, often spending half or more of the year away from the home in Spain's Basque country where his wife and three children live. In 2016, Gonzalez's name appeared on a list reportedly drawn up by academic researchers uh, of 49 Spanish journalists, politicians, and activities whose Twitter comments were deemed pro-Russian. Wow. What such academics. They are so bright and stimulating our, um, uh, you know, our minds. Who the fuck are these morons? They can stuff their degrees up their goddamn asses. They, they mean nothing. You mean nothing. The, they just like to smear people who have different opinions. They're like fucking, you know, they, they are everything that they accuse... Uh, the the Soviets of being, or uh, the Syrians of being, or the North Koreans of being, right? Oh, you have made comments against the state. You are an American imperialist. Like th th this is they are this caricature. This is exactly who they are. Except in the, you know they they say that oh you've made you made comments against the the you know NATO. You are a pro Russian bot. I mean Jesus Christ. These these people call themselves academics. They're like fucking children. As someone who works, so quote, as someone who works on the ground in Ukraine, that is a worry, Pablo Gonzalez said at the time. Yeah, you're damn right it's a worry. It's, it's defamation. And, it's, and, and now he's gotten into trouble because of these academics. Worthless bastards. Pablo Gonzalez began to have problems reporting early in February, weeks after the invasion on, on uh, February 24th, when Ukrainian authorities uh, questioned him while he was waiting for a live link uh, with military positions behind him. So, ba so basically, Ukrainian authorities were interrogating him, and then they told him to go report to military intelligence. I mean, Jesus. Uh, sorry, not military intelligence. The, 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 <laughs> just Ukrainian intelligence. So he, he was then told when he met with Ukrainian intelligence to leave Ukraine, to just get out of the Ukraine. He was advised by Ukrainian intelligence to leave the country, but not formally expelled. Gonzalez sought advice from the Spanish consulate, and then left for Poland. A few days later, agents from Spain's Center for National Intelligence, CNI, visited the family home near the town 
um, of Guernica and quizzed his wife. So now he's in trouble with Ukraine and, and Spain. His wife said there was nothing aggressive about it and they did not come into the house. They suggested that he might be pro-Russian. I don't actually know what that means. After all, a Russian national can be both pro-Russian and anti-Putin. Yeah, you don't say. Apparently, this is not something that, that people in the West grasp, but yeah. So when Gonzalez heard about the visit, he returned to Spain, but when war broke out, he immediately left for Poland. He's a journalist. That's how he makes his living, said Gor um, Gordiana, sorry, his wife. Friends said he also believed Ukraine would allow him back. The Paris-based journalists and geo reporters without borders is watching closely. Uh, they said that the Polish authorities must be more transparent about the evidence they hold against them because so far, information is scarce and detaining a journalist for months without trial is very serious. Yes, it is. Pablo Gonzalez's fundamental rights need to be respected in Poland, an EU democracy. Gonzalez spent his 40th birthday in jail last month. That's nothing has changed. This article was published when when May of uh, 2022. Yeah, so it's it's over a year old and nothing has changed. This guy's still in jail. Uh, there's been no trial. Nothing, nothing. This is his picture, by the way. Forgive me if I if I didn't show you his picture earlier, but but um, you know I I wanted to kind of get get the story out uh, and and uh, tell you what's happening to him because I I find this so disgusting. You know, it's like uh, you know. I'm, I'm at a loss for words. I'm really at a loss for words. So Interpress Service, they say that Pablo Gonzalez is 23 hours uh, per day in his cell without natural light and gets just one hour to walk around in a, in a 7 by 4 meter courtyard. Let me show you. Uh, um, this is his lawyer, okay, uh, describing describing his client's fate. Más de un año después de su detención, el periodista vasco Pablo González ha podido recibir este viernes la visita del abogado Gonzalo Boyé. Anímicamente está bien. Eh, yo creo que la visita ha sido muy buena, entre otras cosas, porque le ha aclarado un poco cuál es la estrategia de defensa. A Boyé, acostumbrado a visitar muchas cárceles, la de Radom le ha impresionado por su nivel de control y seguridad. Por las cárceles a mí no me impresionan. Eh, pero eh, evidentemente esta es una, es una cárcel dentro de la cárcel. El periodista vasco está en régimen de aislamiento. Está 23 horas al día en su celda, no tiene contacto prácticamente con nadie. El abogado le ha trasladado el apoyo que está recibiendo desde Euskal Herria. Él estaba muy emocionado eh, eh, y sobre todo agradecido. Gonzalo Boyé cree que las autoridades polacas ahora sí le reconocen como abogado de Pablo González porque algo ha empezado a cambiar. Yo creo que ellos a esta altura se están dándose cuenta de, de que alguien les engañó. Aunque se preparan para un proceso todavía largo y difícil. No hay una acusación formal y de hecho los abogados no tenemos un acceso pleno a las actuaciones, lo cual genera una indefensión clara, ¿no? Nos cuenta además que el periodista está especialmente preocupado porque el acceso a sus dispositivos ha dejado al descubierto a todas sus fuentes. Son fuentes delicadas. Esas fuentes pueden estar ahora en riesgo. Acusa a Polonia de haber vulnerado el secreto profesional. I'm not even sure what to say. Again, this is this is so so uh, unfair. You know, it's a violation of his human rights. You you would think that in in an EU country. Um, and again, this, this goes for Assange, although now we're not in the EU anymore, but, you know, still Council of Europe, we were still uh, uh, supposed to be uh, respecting that. Um, you know, you, you would think that uh, in, in um, any country, any country, uh, European or otherwise, because, I, you know, un unlike Joseph Burrell, I don't think that Europe is the garden of the planet, this imperialist crap. Anyway, um, you would think that as a journalist, especially, people would understand, oh, okay, you know, you travel a lot, oh, okay, you, you go to dangerous places and you do a lot of hard work. That guy's got a lot of, a lot of uh, um, you know, a lot of uh, grit and, and, and drive and bravery. I mean, going, I, I, I'm not too familiar with his reporting and I don't have to be, but you can see that he, he, he was actually going into dangerous places, into, uh, uh, you know, combat zones and, and, uh, most most journalists, you know, especially the ones who, who are in the West and think that this is okay because, oh, he might be pro-Russia, whatever that means. You know, they will never do that. They never they will never do this work. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, I, I can't I can't help but be uh, reminded of Julian Assange's case. You have another journalist 
who is anti-war, who is, you know, criticizing um, the the West, and and they just, you know, literally throw them in in prison, throw them in jail. Uh, they cook up lies about them. They smear them. They uh, destroy their lives. They separate them from their family. They take their devices. They steal, uh, you know, their belongings. Which is, I mean, Jesus, it, it, you know, this is. He hasn't even been accused of a crime, you know, formally. Under what, on what basis are you taking his devices? You know, th this, is, this is really nasty, nasty stuff. There's a page here that you can follow on Twitter. Claire Daly, she's, she's a member of European Parliament and MEP. Really impressive that the Parliament has swung into action so quickly in relation to the case of anti-Putin, anti-Ukrainian war journalist Vladimir Karamorsa who was given a 25-year prison sentence this week for his journalism, a sentence rightly slammed by the EU as outrageously harsh. It is, but it's still 150 years less than Julian Assange will get if he's convicted and prosecuted in the US for his anti-war journalism, exposing US war crimes in Iraq and Afghanistan. He's been in prison for over four years, tonight of his pre freedom for many more, yet we've never had one of these discussions in here calling for his release. We've never had one discussion about the case of Pablo Gonzalez, imprisoned in Poland for the last year for his anti-war journalism. Unless we're consistent in these motions, then they're nothing more than meaningless geopolitical shams, the instrumentalization of human rights for political ends, and that is not good enough. I want you guys to make some noise about this case because it's very concerning. Solitary confinement, 23. Whoa, whoa, this is insane. You don't treat people like that. And he, he's said all of his rights that you can think of, all of his rights violated. Where's the right to a fair trial? Where's his due process? How can you hold someone in prison for over a year and you don't even charge them with a crime? I mean, what is that? At least make something up, you know? I mean, the funny thing is uh, that they basically have, you know, the spokesperson who I read to you from, they're basically trying to, to justify imprisoning him, but without actually charging him because there's probably no evidence. Um, and, you know, that that's just an another another issue because even if, like, tomorrow morning he's released, which, I mean, would be great, but... Even if tomorrow morning he's released, he's, he's still got this stain on him, which was cooked up and, and, and made up uh, to smear him. Here's another photo of him, by the way. So that, that's him right there. Pablo Gonzalez. Okay, make some noise for him, make some noise for him, just like for, um, uh, for Assange. When we can, you know, raise awareness about cases like this, we should do that. I hope that, you know... What I've just told you here mobilizes some of you and then you mobilize others and it spreads and so on.